Matthias Elway, remarkably relaxed as he enjoys the peace and beauty of Lake Sentani, near the Papuan capital of Jayapura. But the tranquility here is in stark contrast to the turbulent, long-running struggle to break free from Indonesia and set up a new independent nation. Kalau saya menghitung keburukan Indonesia, mungkin Jepang lebih baik, Vietnam lebih baik, Jerman lebih baik, Hitler kita juga lebih baik. Ini bisa terkait. Sepengalaman waktu Belanda jajah kami, tidak pernah satu orang papa pun ditembak di muka umum. Ini bangsa jahat. Papuan's emotions are running high. And with such a mood for change, there are fears of a violent boil over. It's hard to separate the sentiment here from what's going on in Fiji and the Solomon Islands. For these Amungmi women from Papua's highlands, this is a rare journey. Unfamiliar with anything outside their own tribal land, they're off to take part in what promises to be the greatest ever show of pan-Papuan solidarity, an historic independence congress in Jayapura. The morning star flag is the Papuan symbol of the struggle for freedom. The last time the Amungni people flew the flag was late last year in their hometown of Timika. Police opened fire, killing one independent supporter and injuring 50 more. Up in the hills of the capital, another Highland tribe, the Lani from Mulia, have arrived after walking for five weeks. The mood for freedom and independence is infectious. A newfound sense of Papuan nationalism is sweeping the province. Down in the town centre, the Nibiri people, who've also travelled hundreds of kilometres, are making their presence felt. While it's not a sight to strike fear into the hearts of the despised Indonesian military, it's nonetheless a provocative and illegal act. Leading the charge for independence is Chief Tais Elway, the man they call Big Leader. 31 years ago, he was one of the thousand or so delegates to take part in the so-called act of free choice. Kami hanya disuruh bicara, apa yang mereka mau itu yang kita rasa Hati kami menolak hal itu. Karena kami didesak, ditindas, tidak bicara itu nanti tidak pulang ke rumah. Tidak ada kebebasan waktu. Tayas Elway is a tribal chief. At 62, he commands royal respect in a close-knit community on the outskirts of Jayapura. For years, he was a fairly unremarkable member of parliament and signed up with the ruling Golkar party of former President Sahato. Then, two years ago, with Sahato's fall, Chief Tayas began speaking out strongly in favour of independence and organising flag raisings, for which he was arrested. Mereka sudah membunuh, membantai orang-orang Papua tanpa kesalahan. Mereka minta haknya dia sebagai orang Papua, dia dibunuh dan dibatas. Hampir 800 ribu orang. Mereka lihat cahaya itu. Mereka jalan, tapi mereka tidak tahu bagaimana. Putting his faith in Jesus, Chief Tayas now claims to be the chosen one ready to set his people free.
ya rupanya Tuhan menghendaki itu. Ya sebagai alat kecil dalam Tuhan siap. Apapun yang Tuhan perintah rasakan siap. Karena saya menghendaki sebagai sebagai pemimpin. Ya itu adalah tuntutan rakyat. Itu adalah suasana saya terus tolak. Dan saya sudah berjanji kepada rakyat. Sampai nyawa saya pun sudah saya persembahkan untuk perjuangan ini. If the chief is the chosen one to regain the promised land, then this is the outfit to provide the muscle. The newly formed pro-independence militia group Satgas or Task Force. Armed only with sticks, they're not exactly a formidable fighting force. Indeed, among this ragtag army are thugs and criminals. But no matter what their form, ultimately these militiamen answer to Chief Tayas Elway. Untuk sementara waktu, mereka dalam batas-batas menjaga keamanan dan ketertiban. Tapi satu saat. Apabila kita sudah hak kita dikembalikan, kita akan proses mereka itu untuk ambil alih tugas keamanan. It's part of Melanesian culture to mark an important day in this way. The supporters of the self-proclaimed Papuan leader provide a fitting send-off. Resplendent and ready, he's dressed for the big occasion, the opening of the historic Congress on Independence. Joining the convoy and casting an entirely different figure, Another who's played a key role in the long and often brutal struggle against Indonesian rule. <laughs> Matthias Wender is an enemy of the state, a rebel leader with the Free Papua Movement, the OPM. This is a rare public appearance. He risks immediate arrest and jail. Indonesia itu, kami ni. Apa ni? Ah, di tempat dibunuh, dihiris tu banyak sekali kita korban orang Papua ini. Jadi saya tidak mau perang lagi. Mereka! The chief, who's the star attraction, has pledged a peaceful campaign. The Indonesian government has even helped finance the Congress. President Abdul Rahman Wahid promised to upstage the chief and formally open proceedings, but he's a famous no-show. In line with strict government policy, he can't be seen to publicly support the breakaway movement. And there's one compelling reason: money. This is no tourist cable car. It's taking these men to an altitude of more than 4,000 meters to work on one of the world's most extraordinary projects, Freeport. It's one of the richest gold and copper mines in the world. Are we the crown jewel? I guess you could say we are in the sense that we are the biggest operation out here. We employ 14,000 people. We, we provide an economic livelihood for thousands and thousands of people beyond that. Um, so I, I guess that's, that's my definition of what we are out here. Grasberg, a complete mountain, has been gouged away to reveal a vast open cut pit, a vast open pit of money for its American shareholders and a colossal windfall for the Indonesian government. The company is Indonesia's biggest taxpayer, shoveling more than a billion dollars into the government's coffers in the past few years. 
it would be a bitter blow to Indonesia if it were to lose Freeport. And a massive gain to Papuans who dream of a new nation. So, but contra karya itu dengan Indonesia mereka taken itu belum dengan orang Papua. Jadi dalam kontrak ini saya pikir kontrak akan diperbarui kalau akhirnya Papua merdeka. Dan kita belum belum ya baru mau berjuang ya. Papua juga baru berjuang. A Mungmi leader, Tom Bienal, is another key leader in the struggle for Papuan independence. Five years ago, he sued Freeport, alleging human rights abuses and the destruction of Papua's resources. The case was thrown out. The mining giant responded by appointing Bienal to its board of commissioners. But on the question of independence, Freeport is sitting firmly on the fence. I can respect Tom f- for what he feels and, and what he believes in and, and, and his thinking that independence would be far better than any kind of autonomy that the Indonesian government could, could grant to the people of Papua. While Freeport might profess respect for those calling for Papuan independence, it has no wish to negotiate a new contract much less any intention of offending the Indonesian government. Indeed, Indonesian security forces patrol the mine site because of fears of sabotage by OPM guerrillas. While there's been no recent attack, the mine and the military remain on constant alert. This is untuk pengamanan untuk menjaga daerah Magasen di Crespar di atas. Dan saya sebagai polisi, sebagai bawahan hanya melaksanakan perintah pimpinan untuk melaksanakan tugas pengamanan di daerah Freeport khususnya di Crespar. The government has made a decision that that a a military presence is necessary to guard one of the vital assets of the country of Indonesia. Since the 1960s, the OPM has fought against the Indonesian military. Some members of the Free Papua movement have emerged from the jungle to join this charging, chanting throng outside the Independence Congress. Operating from jungle bases along the border and inside neighbouring Papua New Guinea, the rebels have carried out a low-level insurgency against vast numbers of Indonesian troops stationed in Papua province. Matthias Wender is an OPM leader who's engaged in the guerrilla warfare. But the odds against his rebel band have been overwhelming. The Indonesian military stands accused of brutal repression, killing and torturing tens of thousands of Papuans. Now Matthias Wender is armed with a new strategy. Tidak. Merdeka. Merdeka penu. Ini bukan bunuh. Periwangan. Periwangan susi. Mereka the 7,000 men of the Satgas militia would also be prime recruits for any future fighting force. But while Satgas has close ties with Chief Tayas, some rank and file members have not exactly embraced his message of peace and godliness. The militia's image has been tarnished by acts of violence and intimidation against business people and others who oppose the independence movement. Pasti ada keajaiban keajaiban Tuhan berlaku untuk negeri ini. Kan sudah 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 lunas membayar kemerdekaan dengan kami orang sendiri yang dibunuh. 
Pasti Tuhan mengerti hal itu. Tapi pada, pada waktu-waktu tertentu nanti, nanti kita lihat situasi. Kalau situasi mendesak, kemungkinan cara-cara kita bisa pakai. That's a prospect which scares those who don't share the dream of independence. Twice a week, Indonesia's inter-island ferries pull into Jayapura Harbour. Among the thousands of passengers, many from Java looking to make new lives. Their arrival will add to the rich cultural mix here. But rapid transmigration means Papuans may soon be a minority in their own land. In the early 1970s, Indonesians made up only 4% of Papua's population. Today, that figure has climbed to nearly 50%. To the indigenous Papuans, it's yet another form of Indonesian domination. <laughs> Effie Perwarantomo and her husband run a humble soup kitchen in Jayapura. They left crowded central Java two years ago, a time of rioting and economic hardship, when neither of them could find work. Papua for them offered new hope, and the Papuans are their customers and neighbours. Ah, tidak juga. Maksudnya ini bisa berbaur dengan orang Papua begitu orang Jawa. Bisa. Kami bisa berbaur. But there remains a fear of the same instability that plagues much of Indonesia. So what if Papua was to break away? <laughs> Papuans rejoicing. Congress delegates don't actually declare independence outright, but they do take a bold first step. Declaring the province's incorporation into Indonesia in 1963 to be invalid. Amid the jubilation, the independence movement can point to the name change from Irian Jaya to Papua, the right to raise their flag and sing the national anthem. But these gains are largely symbolic. The United States, the European Union and Australia all back Indonesia and President Wahid. But once they organize themselves or initiate the steps to realize that kind of independence, then those people are against us and will take actions without any, uh, let's say, uh, compromise with anybody on that. Itu menurut Gus Dur, menurut orang Papua lain. Kami bahasa bahasa Indonesia. Kami punya kulit, rambut. Itu lain dari Indonesia. Kami masuk rumput Melanesia, bukan Melayu. Itu yang Gus harus tahu. Dia rupanya buta melihat hal itu. Papuan identity has found a new, vibrant expression. The struggle for Melanesian rights in Fiji and the Solomons will only fuel a new militancy. Indonesia has lost its hold over these people. It's difficult to gauge the will of all who call Papua province home, but there's never been a referendum as there was in East Timor. Short of Indonesia changing its hardline stand, it's unlikely there ever will be.